question. Like, I know we don't normally start like this, but I, I really don't give a fuck. I got a question though. Uh, are we the only podcast that's this deep that actually does fucking intros? Because I feel like I watch all these other pods and they have like the little camera thing. Like they do like, you know, a little, in, like they have like a pre-made intro. But I feel like we're the only ones who are actually introducing ourselves to. Yeah, I would agree with Probably, that. Yeah. yeah. Us and part of the interruption. Yeah, all right, you know, fuck the intros, Josh. Quick hitters on these bitches. All right, I got you. Damn. All right. Had a good nickname this time. <laughs> 43 episodes later. <laughs> I did. Glizzy Gardner. Let's go. <laughs> Fire. Right. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Fire. Yeah. No, it's on record. We're, we're rolling. <laughs> Have you ever thrown up in an Uber? No. Uh, Dreadful people who do. No, 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 no. Never thrown up in an Uber. Oh, I've definitely thrown up in Atlanta. All over myself. <laughs> the first time I was with all over themselves. Got hit with the hundred dollar charge. It was terrible. God damn. Right. But that was it. Was only a hundo. And yeah. you lucky, yeah. bro. One of our homegirls threw up. I went and cleaned it, and her boy still got hit with three hundo. Really? Yes. You it? Yeah, dude. I'm a good fucking friend. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about to say, did you hit? Like, uh, no, I cleaned. <laughs> no, bro. This was fucking beat the name. It doesn't matter. But like, yeah, beat the name. It was fucking. Birthday, bro. Oh, yeah, she okay. was gonna throw up in the car. Mm-hmm. I took my shirt off that a wife beater. I hand her the shirt and she chooses to still throw up in the cup holder. No, oh, I let her boyfriend throw up over my arms one time at the at, at that uh the famous uh the Hoyt's famous a uh no clothes party. <laughs> the homie Leather. threw up all over my arms and and I just had to let it bro, happen. Bro. But I remember because we just- I was holding Travis <laughs> let him hold, throw up in his arms. She was trying to hold come on, this is a smaller individual. I I'm holding him by his little bit of hair, pulling his head back, <laughs> and he's on the carpet, but he's like insisting on like laying on his side. He's like and a five, yeah, up. he was a five three man. He was a little man. Him and his girl have some of the work. Golly, bro. Yeah, hey, I know I'm an asshole, but I've done some. I've done some things for my friends when they're drunk that I don't think a lot of people have in them. I'll I say that. <laughs> what he says? You assert yourself in every crisis situation, bro. I mean, it's got. Hey, how are they? Much crises after I insert myself? No, bro. I'm a diffuser. That's what they call me. Have you already done your Christmas shopping? Fuck yeah, no. no. I said last episode. Everyone's getting gift cards. I don't have the energy. You haven't got the gift cards yet? Nah, fuck. It's a gift it's card. A gift you card. Gift. I, I, got I, got I already got Kiara her wedding gift card. <laughs> Oh, that's different. That's that's you wedding. said Christmas. Oh, but it's like if you got her, you're her, your gift. No, she's getting cash. There you go. Yeah. Fuck. You, all right. Fuck. Cash <laughs> all right. Who was your childhood crush? Ooh. Hmm. What ages? Yeah. That's the that's one who true. first came up, Brenda Song. Ooh. I was say, from the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Big, big need. I was going to say uh, <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> Jessica Biel. Jessica Biel? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Jessica oh, yeah. Biel. Jessica Biel was fine. Seven Heaven with the sound off? No, mm. the one with Chuck and Larry. Yeah, uh, that's Jessica Biel. Mm. Yeah. What would you like to see different in 2022? Oh, uh, wake up and my account just says money. <laughs> you want that? <laughs> if I can, I'll work hard afterwards to maintain it. But I'm just saying, if I get to pick tomorrow what happens in 2022, yeah. like last year was like an omen because we were at a, the house party and the stimmy hit while I was at the house party. Uh, that sounds fire. So, I mean, it really, at, at that point, it didn't really matter because, you know, like we're out. Like I'm not going to, I'm already where I'm at. I'm not going to spend money at a house party. So it was cool to have. But I'm like, you know, if, if, Joe, if Joe Byron could, you know, just drop some more <laughs> off for your boy, bing bong. I knew, I, I knew, I wanted to say bing bong. <laughs> you just fucking had to say it. That's great. Oh, man. How often should you use a new toothbrush? That's a good fucking question. I actually just got a new fucking toothbrush. I, you know what's so funny? I literally threw mine away after I brushed my teeth this morning. I'm like, maybe I like, a new one. Maybe like... Th- maybe like three, four months. I was gonna say two and a half to three and a half months, like around. It depends on what type yeah. of toothbrush you get, though. But yeah. no, you can switch the heads out with you know with all like the electric ones and shit like that. But yeah, okay. how often you should should you use a new towel? Shit, I'm a fucking weirdo. Every I'm other not- wash, I would say. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, You're a weirdo. Wait, God, you- no, we, no, we already, know, we already say, know Travis is showering. No, I was going to say in a good way. Like I actually use a lot of fucking towels. Unfortunately, how often are you changing out your towel? Probably like fucking. A new one every three days, I'd say. Yeah, oh, I would say. Yeah, I would say every other shower every three days. You some, yeah, some two towels a week, right? Okay. Depends yeah. on how many showers. So if I end up taking a two shower, I'd say maybe it's like a two to four shower type of ordeal. Yeah. But if I'm like clean taking it, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe we can do a couple more days. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know, do you wash your sheets or do you wash your own towels? Of course. Okay. How often do you wash your sheets? Once mm-hmm. a week, once every ten days. Once I feel a like week, yeah, right? like seven to I'm ten days. I'm a little days, more than that. I'd like, say like. I say we have a guest I like producer. Ten remember. days. I'm, ten I'm days like a ten days. All right. Oh, he's already admitted that on the yeah, show. Yeah, I've already admitted that. Yeah, yeah I'll we know work tra- out. Travis. Yeah. Tra- I'm fucking lazy. I'm sorry. Fuck it, man. Don't yell at me. I didn't say he fuck said Fuck you, viewers, for judging me. You know what I'm saying? You, if you ain't sleeping in my bed, you don't get fucking no opinion. You know what I'm saying? 
I do wash my sheets after I dirty. It's just I I sleep in <laughs> hold the. On, hold on, hold on. What type of language is that? I do wash sheets after I dirty. <laughs> I eat when hungry. Hey, you got it. You don't understand what the fuck I'm saying. You know the vibe exactly. Have you ever walked out on a date? Walked out? No, no, no. I don't think so. Has anybody ever walked out on a date with you? No. Mm, <laughs> I'm no. defended. Oh, okay, I have a, I have a question. How many real dates have you been on as an adult? Because I'll, I'll say the truth. Yeah, I'm about to say for me, I, I don't know. You know, they call oh, it, is it under five. You think? Prop real dates? Yeah, like, you probably. don't know her. Like it's uh, not yeah, your girlfriend. Yeah, probably under five. Yeah. yeah okay. That's kind of figure. I was, like, I, I was really a think... genuine individual. It would not like I said. That don't I, mean a goddamn you know, thing. Let me fucking talk. Let me fucking talk. Like right, I said, hey, I'm, ahead, a, I'm a weird guy. We had a conversation last yeah. episode. If you get through the first two minutes, five minutes, it's gonna be a great fucking time. Just make it through that. We're gonna be fucking good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Here you go. Um, have you ever gone on a blind date? <laughs> so it's fucking matter. <laughs> no, fuck that. I'm with, I'm with Gomez. No, go, this thing go is saying, this thing this thing said, I'm a gen- hey, Have no, you ever been walked out on a date? I'm a great guy. No, I'm a great guy. I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of the biggest scumbags I fucking know out there. I'm, I'm a great guy. I'm a great guy. <laughs> I'm a great guy. Hey, he- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a pretty good fucking rate. You know yeah, but Travis, they gotta have like they gotta get the they gotta get every prize toy out of a cereal box to decode what the fuck you're saying. Just know, just, <laughs> like, I'll, just know, I'll, I'll hypnotize you. You, you. you get me for ten minutes, you get two years minimum. <laughs> you I just hey, you know you know what I just picture Travis <laughs> trying to like single Travis. You know how Travis always fucks up names like he's like my dad. Like Travis always fucks up people's names and stuff. I just picture her asking him if like he'd be like, "Oh, do you know so and so?" And her and him having a conversation for like two hours about some friend that they don't have because Travis has told them that this is a completely wrong person. It's supposed to be he's talking about a nigga named like Thomas Jackson. They're talking about a nigga named Tim Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> I could get that mixed up. <laughs> have you ever gone on a blind date? No, no. Um, like a group date, I guess. Like okay. I knew I was coming later. Would you would you ever go on a blind date if your friend was like, I'm gonna hook up with this girl? She doesn't have an Instagram. For shits and wiggles, maybe. Zobo, Josh maybe. just literally sent that's literally they were cool, like don't get me wrong. But Josh was like, um, Oh yeah, let's go out and uh, I know these two girls, let's go out. And I was like, I trust Josh. I don't I didn't consider that like a group date. <laughs> Josh, yeah. I didn't consider that like a group date, but it definitely was like Oh, and then when we got there, we were the only people in this place for the most part. Let's and go. I was just like, Oh, I'm gonna have to like really talk today. Like do we have a great time like always? Oh, it was fucking awesome. I could, I could Josh see, left his wallet. We had to go back and get it. I could see some scumbags. Strategically? No, Strategically, they were closed. Um, yeah. I could see some scumbags seeing like uh, she brings some friends, you know? That's a group date or that's a blind date, you know? Oh, here's, a, qu- the here's a question. No, Can you trust a girl on a blind date? You trust your homie more though, right? He's no, gonna, he's no, like, no, he's no, no, no. I trust chicks. No, you because tr- a girl be like, my friend's cute. No, no, no. See, the thing is though, every girl has pictures of her homegirl. My boy might not have pictures or her. Like he'd be like, "Oh, this is no." He's like maybe his girl, like his friends with the girl he's bringing you. He's not. He may not have access to her friend's Instagram, and his girl might also be like, "Why the fuck are you texting me asking me about someone's?" You know what I mean? Because she might not even know you. So okay. she's like, I would, "I'm not." Your the girl is going to have a picture, and women are like Wikipedia. She's going to tell you everything about her homegirl, and you're going to find out how friendly they really are while she's describing her. See, I feel like you care more than me and Travis would. I feel like I, the way I feel it, at least from the the way that I got the question. Is it's just that from at least the girls that I could actually say that I would talk to and can talk to and stuff like that, besides the ones that have relationships, at least like super homebody relationships. Yeah. Uh, like, I feel like those girls are pretty real about like, all right, like, are they, you know, are they, are they hot? Or are they fucking not hot? You know what I'm saying? Like, I they'll be like, real with you. I feel like the the three that I can Look, the homegirls. I feel like the homegirls are better because I've definitely had one be like, I'd be surprised if you didn't fuck. Like, that's been a direct quote from. And I was like, OK. Appreciate like, the honesty, yeah. Yeah, she's just like, yeah, yeah, because you know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you'll find out during that conversation how f- like of friends they really are. You know what I mean? Like, and Zoe being like, a solid six point seven. You know what I'm saying? They, they know what to throw that. Hey, I, hey, I got an extra two points. I was gonna go point five. Eight times, so. <laughs> Have you ever got your phone stolen? It's the jacket. Yes. Stolen at Southwestern so, College. My what first year. I do remember first this. year. Of fucking my first iPhone. First year playing JC football. At Southwestern College. Some piece of shit stole my fucking iPhone five out my all black. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild nowadays. <laughs> my iPhone five, all black. It was my first one because I didn't get my first one because I was too. I got a. I got a fucking Android because I didn't want to be. I, I needed a smartphone. I wasn't. Do you have like the MV five for like? I ever? had like I don't know. It was, it was the silver brick. flip one. No. Oh, I did have that. That one, one yes. was hard. I that had was, that goat one. Yeah, I didn't that was have hard. That goat one on Instagram. But yeah, so shout out Southwestern. So for the good and for the bad. <laughs> Got swiped by the Jags. Hey, you'll, um, you'll see all the Plaza Bonita 8s you want. You know what I'm saying? You get a good education. You know what I'm saying? It's good stuff. Who's the greatest dunker of all time? Shit. In-game or contest? In-game. 
Bro, that gotta be Vince Carter. That's what I'm nah, saying. Vince Carter. I, I don't think that's. I don't Lenny think Wilkins. I don't think that's know, the end game one, who? bro. Uh, or, or is it, uh, it is Lenny Wilkins. I think Lenny Wilkins. Lenny Wilkins. I said. I said Wilkins. Uh, they are said we, Lenny Wilkins. Yeah. Well, who the yeah, fuck's yeah, Lenny? Yeah, I don't know. Who's the coach? Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> are we aware of who Stromile Swift is? Yeah. Do we know who Green is? I was about to say Gerald Green. Gerald, Gerald Green would be my pick, to be honest with you, because that's a body at all times. But you don't think Vince Carter, bro? Not in game, bro. Bro, yeah. Yeah, that dunk on Alonzo Morning with the whole pause yes. and air. I saw that live. That was your, well, not actually. I wouldn't, you know what I'm talking about the fucking TV. Yeah, <laughs> actually, you know, you know, hey, we're hella disrespectful. We're all being disrespectful. We're all being disrespectful. And because being we disrespectful? forgot about him, it's Blake Griffin, bro. In game, oh, if we're talking shit. in game, it's Blake Griffin, bro. Oh, you know, Timothy Mosgolf? Yeah, fucking it. Vince Carter jumped over somebody. That is wild. I, okay, I'll go this pound for pound. What does that even mean? Like the most. <laughs> right, the, 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 <laughs> like if we're talking the most in game ten dunks. Yes, if we're talking like the like how many like are nines? Like Blake Griffin has like. 49s you know what i mean like vince carter might have like eight tens but i'm saying like consistent like blake griffin every I night i don't see it the opposite, the opposite. Shaq no. Has, no no the dunks aren't that big with Shaq. it's the body yeah. language and the antics afterwards the volume, the volume but those, the volume it's not that impressive to see someone that big dunk though, let's be that. honest I'll here like, like, like i understand where you're coming from the logic behind yeah. that but i think he's talking about he's talking about the best though we're talking about the best yeah like like over over six foot can we be honest here like over six like, nine blake griffin, six, blake griffin has two dunks where this piece of shit threw the ball into you saw the he did the kendrick rim. perkins you know what i'm saying like, that shit's just fucking stupid <laughs> like you know what i'm saying Bro, like, the jamal crawford between the legs windmill on the fast break wild Dope. Well, LeBron, LeBron, LeBron has good. a couple of nasty ones. Hey, you know J.R. Smith did say I throw bad passes on purpose to see if hey, LeBron. Hey, J.R. Smith. Hey, yo, J.R. Spliff has Bro, a couple. The fucking, one where he has the, a couple. The, of, the, JR, the JR in Denver when he takes yes, off like a foot in between yes. the foul line. The three sixty. The three sixty. Oh, no, the alley, it, oh, the alley. Oh, the alley. That was just. There's a couple. I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with Blake. And yeah. I might be recency okay, bias, yeah. But I'm like Jr. Smith's on my short list though. Right, I got, I'm gonna go Vince Carter. I'm going Vince Carter, but I want I want to think real quick for something real quick. Okay. Best in game block of all time, Shannon Brown for the Lakers. Yes, yes. 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 They call the foul, even though. Kobe when he goes, oh, and he looks around. Yeah. That's the best in game block of all time. To everybody out there who's like, I love seasons. <laughs> the fall fills me with joy, warm hearts. You pumpkin spice loving bitches. <laughs> bruh, ain't a leave change a fucking color, bruh. We live in San Diego. Let's just keep it a whole buck. You never trust the weather. Wear a sweater. I've lived by that my whole life. You can take the sweater off. It's a great model. Been living that since, like, you know, if you know Zo, I'm a crew neck guy. Sounds legit. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. It's <laughs> uh, legit. That is funny, though. That's lit. Uh, but I just feel, me personally, like, I went to Vermont straight out of high school. I'd never even seen snow, except when you go to Vegas, you see that dirty ass snow on the side of the road. My thought process was like, I didn't even see, like, I saw like winter go into spring and a little bit of summer, but that doesn't happen here. It rains randomly, mm -hmm. the leaves drop off the trees, and they either don't grow back or they come back green. Yeah. There's no brown. No. Yeah. Travis is the darkest leaf that has been seen in San Diego outside Damn. of Balboa Park. Damn. <laughs> Balboa Park has seasons. It's like a, it's like a, like a, a capsule, like in San Diego. It's the only place that has seasons. It's because the zoo's there. I feel like there's like dark magic. But outside of that, okay. nowhere else. You guys are fucking frauds. What do you guys think? I think they're frauds. I like. I would agree with you for sure. What do yeah, you think, I just think nobody coming from uh, an old native of coming out of high school was Reno. Reno gets cold as fuck after December. And then going to Durango, Colorado. Fuck that. That was really cold. But yeah, just that. Okay, in Colorado, Colorado has seasons. Like we have the aspens up there and shit like that. You know all those those trees. I got to see real color change, like orange. Bitches the size of like you know that one uh, the ginger bitch that Nickelodeon show. You know, what as told by ginger goat. Top exactly, five, top five. Exactly. Life. Remember that throwback. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, told me. so you get real seasons. You're right. Here you don't get that shit. It's just. It's just. It's hot. It's hot in, in in football season in the fall. You'll go to a game out in fucking uh, what's that place in El Camino. It'll be hot as fuck out there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just in San Diego, you just don't get it. It's just, it's just the weird. girl girls climbing fall here is like stolen valor, right? Oh, hundred percent. They just want to find a reason to put on tan. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no. Do you know what stolen valor is? I don't. See, that's why I didn't stop this. 
All right, stolen valor. Because you're not gonna appreciate this joke right now, I but later you will appreciate it. Because that was so funny. This has to be stopped. <laughs> stolen valor is like you know when you go to the um, Goodwill and they always have like a bunch of old military stuff, and okay. like, you know there's badges and stuff. Yeah, yeah, guys will go and get the stuff in the Goodwill, and you know they donate the badges and mm-hmm. they'll donate their um, ah, uh, what's the box called? Uh, I'm uh, shadow box. My dad has one. He's retired. So they'll take pins from like old military family shadow boxes and stuff, and they'll walk around like they're wearing that, and like try to get discounts. They'll approach other oh, military fuck, people. That's so bad. They'll have, they're, there's like a whole account called Stolen Valor on Instagram. I follow them. Cause, really? Because it's fuck, first of all, it's fucked up. Niggas are walking around with purple hearts and things yeah. like that. But what Josh says <laughs> that these chicks dress up, <laughs> Josh. You know what's funny? I just picture like brown leggings. Um, some type of black boots that are about shin high, a long white yarn knitted sweater. It's probably cute, and like one of those hats. They're like on their forehead, but it's like kind of floppy, like a cook hat. Yeah, and yeah. her like this, like with her arms like that. And I was like, stolen valor, stolen valor. Because you know where she's going, El Cajon. It's gonna be ninety two degrees that day. You got bitches going to Target in Uggs and like it's just sweaters. San, and like, Diego, what? <laughs> San Diego Fall reminds me of that infamous picture that goes around on Twitter and Instagram every year of all those pumpkin spice latte <laughs> hoes, and they all look the same, and they're all wearing the tan or like brown boots with the with the with the blue jeans and like the tan jacket, and it just it just looks like they smell like you, pumpkin spice. You know why you know I don't fuck with San Diego when they say they like seasons? And this might get like because you guys don't like. I was only in Vermont six months. I've been in South Carolina during like a tropical storm. That was fucking wild, but that's a little bit different than this. They don't see like what sucks about when you live somewhere wet like that. Like, no, oh my sucks. god, the snow! You know what's funny? You know why that you think the snow is funny, Tabitha? Because you've never had to fucking shovel your driveway so your fucking Subaru to make it a CVS. <laughs> like, I was in Boston for one winter one time. We go visit my uncle. Shit's overrated. You have to yeah. salt your stairs. Yeah, you have to everything. wait. Like, bro, it's miserable, bro. And you know what's if you funny? Don't have a four wheel. No, no and, and, and you know what's funny? They think snow is cool. You know what? That shit hurts. First of all, snow hurts. <laughs> that shit hurts. Snow, hurts. snow hurts. But you know what? You know what? This is what people forget. You know what happens to the snow? It melts. And now it just went from fluffy and nice and it hurts. To slush. To just slushy and Muddy grimy. Slush. And everything. Dirt. Bro, in Vermont, let's picture this real quick. Imagine I'm in the cafeteria, like in the cafe we were at. There used to be a giant hill. I went to a school where the guy who invented the mason jar owned like the land we lived on. So there's this hill. The hill is about a quarter acre. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> not, not the regular mason jar, but the one you close and you flip and you do that thing. Yeah, he donated his Ooh, mansion to a school. Oh, I, the real right, mason yeah, jar. Yeah, yeah. So he, he so I, I mean, if I'm two. sitting here looking out the window, there's a mountain that is about a quarter mile like around. And I cut through it because I just, you know, first day, pictures. It had snowed for four days straight. We had picture day for my team. I play college volleyball. I know I look like I ate the volleyballs, but it's all good. Anyway, I'm walking down the hill. I'm in my Timberlands. I'm looking, you know, really thugnificent, you know. My ass must it went on my little trail, you know. But when it snowed, the trail was fine. A little icy, but it's fine. When it when it uh, melts, guess what the trail is now? Slush. Slush. My ass slid about 400, and I'm not joking. Not joking at all. 400 feet. Looking like Donnie from fucking Wild Thornberries, bro. <laughs> and I, sl- I slide. Right so, like, right hundred. outside. So, like, if this is, like, the cafeteria window, like, where Josh's side jar would be, would, like, be, like, this little access road for us to go up the mountain, like, you know, the squad, okay, little yeah, tram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the other side of that, right on the edge, is where I slid down the fucking mountain. First of all, almost get clipped by a bus because he doesn't see me because as I'm sliding He's down, sliding. I'm on my back. I get up, have to go. And keep in mind, niggas are looking at me through the cafeteria. Like, you see, I've been sliding for I eight. Too. I've been sliding for eight seconds. If I saw, if I saw a nigga some Tim sliding down like a turtle, bro, on his bro, bro, my feet in the, bro, exactly. my feet in the air like I'm trying to get my ass ate. It's wild, bro. Whoa, <laughs> it looks crazy. Damn. So I'm sliding down this. And we're gonna Jeez. move on to the next topic. After. I'm sliding down this, hey, bro, bro. I slide down, and then I need to get into my fucking uh, my dorm room. Luckily, my dorm room is. Oh, I went to small school right across from the calf. So it's maybe 75 feet away from where the window is. I walk in the dorm and uh, our dorm advisor looks at me. She's like, you're not going in your fucking room like that. And I'm like, why? She's like, you're tracking mud in the whole. I'm like, I don't think you understand. God, I wish I remember her name. She was cool though. But um, I'm like, no. So I was like, fuck it. She goes back in her dorm. I just take my pants off in the hallway, throw my backpack in the common area. And I just jump in the shower with my clothes on. And that's when the legend of Blue Chew Dunzo was created. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it, no, and it gets worse because I'm, I'm on a college budget. I had to get there early for training. I haven't gotten, um, I haven't gotten my allowance from my parents yet. I was like 18. Mm. So like, 
Oh, it's the first day of school. Literally, this is the first day of school. Oh no, second day of school. Second day of school. I've literally washed oh, all my clothes. Two days. No, no, I've been there all like all winter for uh, oh, the off season yeah. training. I was there like three weeks early. So I go, I go to the fucking. Uh, you know, I've washed myself and my clothes are still soaking wet, half of mud. I have picture day in five hours. Second day of school, I skip class. Precursor to how the rest of my college career would go. But um, <laughs> bro, I had to walk. Come on, I'm in Vermont. I have to walk now across maybe 200 yards of parking lot to the fucking athletic center to explain to my trainer that I need to use the laundry. I need to use the fucking dryer and shit because my broke college ass had washed all my clothes for the first week of school. And I had no more money in my account and no money on my fucking on my wash thing. And I can't call my mom because it's, it's 10 o'clock. This is a before nine. It's like it's like ten o'clock. I'm not calling her at seven a.m. California time to explain to her. This is how my fucking day is going. It's the second day of college. <laughs> she would have said, "Yeah, it was horrible." So Something all you people day. who you think you like seasons, you guys are fucking trash. But speaking of the season, mm. it is around the season of love. The end of the year, especially due to COVID, people are doing all types of things. You it's know, cuffing make, it's cuffing season. But you know what happens when you really cuff? Mm. You get married. Wow, that is the goal. Don't ever forget the goal of dating is to get married to get married. And the goal of living is to grow old folks. I know we lose that in today's today's day and age. What's that? What's that? But with that being said, we've seen the movies. <laughs> we know the topics. We've seen the girls. Mm. Do we think, and I can say this, obviously I've never done this, Okay, but has, do we think it's actually easy to hook up with someone at a wedding? Josh, go ahead. You look like you're a man of experience here. Um, depends. If it's like a family wedding, no, because it's like kind of weird vibes. If this it's in West Virginia. If it's a yeah. If it's your friend's wedding, yes. Still might hook up with your family in West Virginia, but anyway. All right. Um, Jeez. If it's, uh, if it's your friend's wedding, there's going to be more people your age. Yeah. More chill vibes. Definitely yeah. way easier. And your parents are there to watch you. Way easier. Got it. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I think it just, I think the destination matters. Because I'll say this. I am 100% against sharing rooms. But me and Travis Loki just had to do this due to a occupancy issue at the last place we were at. Mm. So I would say it just depends. Because if you're going somewhere super elaborate and it's like, damn, all right, you know, you start looking at people like, all right, just for us to get to said destination wedding is like 1500 bucks. I might be more inclined to split a room with my homie if he's single. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, all right, we'll, we'll thug this one out. But if we're like, I was about to say something, but I'm like, I know people have had weddings at all the places I was about to say, so I don't want to, I didn't <laughs> want to, indir- I didn't want to, yeah, I don't want to indirectly like shoot shots. Oh, it's Salt Creek Golf Course. Cause it's not there anymore. You know what I mean? Fuck, like, I don't know if someone, yeah. But if you had your wedding like Salt Creek Golf Course, no roads. Turn up. Like, it's not as complicated. I'm like, oh, if, especially if you're in your city, like, oh, we can get a hotel room anywhere. You know what I mean? But if I'm in fucking Port the Prince, I'm like, and that shit's seven, like 575 a night. Like, I'm looking at Travis, like, hey, nigga, we're going to Coinstar. And we're gonna split this room. Okay, are you more likely to hook up with a girl like at a beach wedding or like at a regular hotel? So wedding? what I was gonna say to that, in a sense, I think it's interesting that you think of it like that because in my mind, if I were if I were in that case, if I had to go to like the Bahamas or Port de Prince or Tulum or something for a wedding, and I was single, I would do everything in my power to get some poon. You know what I'm saying? Like I would do everything because I'm like I'm there for a reason. Okay, I spe- all, right, all right, what's the game plan? What's the everything game plan? Everything in your power. What, what's everything. The game? I mean, at that point, you know what I'm saying. If it's, walk us through the steps. Yeah, walk, I, I walk, got, walk you, us I got through, you. Hold bro. up. Yeah. Exactly. Hold up. So hold up. So so let's 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 draw the scene up first. Okay. Let's draw the scene. Please. So this is a homie's wedding. Let's call it the homie's wedding because we're gonna talk about easier. Because you're right. If it's a family situation, this is in West Virginia. So you know, Mountain Mama. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> you know the song. Keep going. No, I don't. <laughs> you know the song, damn it. Uh, so so um so it's a friend's wedding. So at that point, you know they got friends. Women got friends. At that point, everybody tries to play the through the friend. You know what I'm saying? Not to sound like obviously liquid courage is a huge factor here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> huge factor. Let's not understate this. <laughs> or hey, or, 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 you know what? Let's just be honest here. What? Just drugs at weddings. What people okay. do drugs at weddings? Let's not act like people don't do but, drugs. Okay, at weddings. you're right. We are adults. People do drugs at weddings. Yes. I'm trying to keep this civil for the people here. Okay, like, I but, say which drugs? You know, drugs. so you know, at that point, it's just you know, you got to catch the vibe. You know, you just got to catch the vibe, make some friends, get in with the, the friends. Because I'm not gonna lie, if 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 game came to game, like it's worst comes to worst, I'm hitting on the waitresses that's passing out the drinks. You know, what I'm saying like oh, from the get go, you're, you're yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm just going. I mean, if it's if it, it depends on how not, waitress is at least. Like eleven o'clock, damn! We don't have any front runners. I haven't made any connections. Fuck, you know what I'm saying? Start throwing, just shooting the shots. Just go. You know, what are I'm you saying? are you sending little shots at the waitress as a backup plan throughout the night? Of course. Or 
are you okay? I was about to say, are you just going like, hey, what time do you get off? A little heavy, act like you're a baller, even though you're not. You know what I'm saying? And then at that point, little starts a little combo action. You know, something light, just you know, something quick, little jokes there and there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get a smile through the night. Maybe you know you're getting a little closer, closer. You know what I'm saying? But it's just I'd I'd go after friends. I'd poach some friends there. You know what I'm saying? How do you go after the friends? Maybe a drunk mom's. You know, mom's friend. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she's a coog. You know what I'm saying? Anywhere from 44 to let's call it 53. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's solid numbers. That's solid, solid numbers, numbers, right? Solid that's what I'm saying. Numbers. You know, so that's what I. Hey, what do you talk to the coog about, like Lionel Richie? Or, or what you, I mean, hopefully, because I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna say what wedding, even though I haven't been on only weddings. But you know, I had a mom recently. You know, we've, you know, she's a good gal. She's known me for a while, but you know, she, you know, she was giving hitting that's your man a little bit. You know what I'm saying? She, she tried to dance. It was like, hey, that's for your girl, huh? And certain, I was like, yeah, it's only for her. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So, hey, you know. I feel. I feel like the no, respectively, of course, respectively. I, I mean, no was. offense, but I think Zoe would be the most likely one to hit a mom like 45 to 55 years old. Oh, it's definitely. Yeah, I've no. seen Dunzo in action with moms. Uh, that, just, that's his. That's his. Just ballpark. at weddings. Just at weddings. Oh, he's a, he's a, a, he's a oh, wedding he, type of guy. You're uh, he, so trash. <laughs> <laughs> You're so hey, trash. He was, hey, he was out there. My yeah. man was out there. And I my, was. My man was shooting above above 50 percent from the from hey. from the field. 75 from free throw Easy Easy Man, yeah. man was in there it's Dunzo just... is a child of God <laughs> Shut the fuck up <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'll say this uh, Maybe not on the Banging someone uh, Or like you know Getting with someone They say banging someone We're not 12 um, Fucking but like... porter bro <laughs> <laughs> Give her the real sausage <laughs> <laughs> I just saw like the wildest like deli reference in my life. Like, I love like, it. Like, like I made her vagina the casing for my salami. Like some wild shit like that. But um, that maybe that maybe it's on the beef broken <laughs> What is wrong with us? Like it's not even you. This is us. Like, um, I was gonna say because um, me and Travis did go to a wedding recently together. And uh, the cool thing I, I liked about that one is, and this is a little bit off the dating someone or like trying to hook up with someone at a wedding. You gotta pick if you're not gonna do that because me and I was me and Travis were both pretty much like that wasn't an option. Yeah, it wasn't. We were, yeah, it wasn't we were around a lot way. of childhood friends. We weren't yeah. like we weren't on that tip yeah. with that. But we did learn one true thing. You gotta make sure, like the one thing you have to try to coordinate is the table you sit at during the reception. We had Being, one of the wildest motherfuckers. Shouts out! To, what were we? Table seven, table nine. Oh, I think it was. I think it was seven. I think Chelsea table seven. I think bro. it was table seven. God, bro, it was we late. were stupid. Bro, yeah. twenty minutes in, Travis was teaching people at the table how to shotgun the the drink with the hand over. We're over here. This shit was hard. They're passing around my mug shot. Like it was a wild time. It, it, that was a party trick I learned at the beak. They showed me my girlfriend. Bro, Travis, cousins. Travis, this girl, they bring the champagne out. Shouts to my nigga Michelle, but it looked like no class. Just drinks the champagne, doesn't wait for the toast. The waiter has to come back yeah, around. Okay, bro, the, the flashes are going off behind us. They have like one of the giant cameras, like and you just see it's like on the random timer to catch you just doing stuff. And every like the flash is going on right behind us, as if we're not drawing enough attention because we have turned into the table of quote unquote woo girls. We are fucking yeah, wild. we are the woo girls. We of, were wild. Of, of, we we of participated the in the woos. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. Was, um. Yeah. PSA after I was in a Uber with Josh and two unnamed associates. One, I apologize to Josh. Your boy got loaded too drunk too fast. I didn't invite him to my dick, nor say I would put hands on him, but I'm about public apologies. So I, for two out of the last three weeks, I've had to apologize to someone for my actions while drunk. Don't get it fucked up. I'm not that belligerently drunk. This is a one time a week thing, but me and Josh like to argue a lot. Not like me getting that angry one time a week. I just haven't seen my man in four months. I just got a little ahead of myself, but I like to be honest about things. But leading into that, because I was chirping at Uber, Uber drivers, I'm just going to make this PSA <laughs> because an affiliate of ours got in the Uber. Shout out to my nigga because he was wild. He, he gets to the Uber. He says, yo, what's up with the music? <laughs> this is the type of shit you be on. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, I have a lot of people in the car. Da, 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 different styles. You know, he's trying to backpedal out of this because yeah. my man's involuntarily applied pressure. Hostile. <laughs> he's not even that hostile. I just feel like people don't, uh, people in today, today's day and age don't know how to handle when people are direct with you. Yeah. And I feel like he was just blatantly direct. He okay. had like the whole customer type of, but I will say this, unlike my friend, I am not one of these niggas. Let's make this clear. When I get in the Uber, do not change the music because I'm a big black guy. All right. <laughs> I like Panic at the Disco. Hmm. I fuck with Kylo. Wow. Funny people are cool. Mm. I love Mink Mill. 
ESTG to IDIE. You know, it's all the. It's, I, I got a wide variety. My dad is one of the biggest stinging police fans, not regular police, stinging police fans I've ever seen before in my life. You know Clarification. What I mean? You know? But here's the number one thing I don't want to see anymore. Because mm. here's the thing at the end of it, I understand it's not aggressive or detrimental profiling. But it is fucking profiling. If I get in the car and you're playing Gym Class Heroes and instantly switch it to TI and 03. Yes, I want to hear Be Easy. But, you know, I write uh, Sins Not Tragedies. They're the same fucking thing. You know what I mean? That's they could both be top five. Now, this is another thing I don't want Ubers to do after they do this. Because this shit fucking pisses me off also. This is top five. Now that you've learned... Because I've had to sing two songs in the back to let you know, don't change the fucking mood. You know, sometimes I'm in a Phoenix type of fucking mood, okay? I saw gym class in the pit in 04, you know, or 05. Don't fuck with me, wow. all right? This is the number one thing they do. Don't now want to play, oh, have you heard this one? For the next 20 minutes of this fucking ride, bro. That's the most... Turn into a game show? Yes, because now you're Steve Harvey with the, let's see about black people. And I don't want to fucking, I don't want to hear that shit. I don't care. I genuinely don't care. Mm -hmm. You know what? You're going to put on some 41. I want to hear off killer, no filler. And shut the fuck up, Greg. I wouldn't mind some Green Day. You yeah. know what I mean? This is, yo, I just had to get off my chest because when my man did that, it was funny as fuck. But it made me think like all the times I've been to Ubers, I'm like, this happened to me numerous times. If you follow me on Twitter, you have seen, I've tweeted every fucking, it just happened to me yesterday. I got in the car. Mm. He was playing something. And all of a sudden, I just hear passion fruit. And I'm like, this isn't even the right switch. Like, <laughs> you know, fuck, I didn't get off an eight-hour shift to hear. No, nigga. You can't go from when September ends to passion fruit. Like, you just can't. No, go. like, oh, it's just, that one actually would kind of make sense. Really? Yeah. I just, dude, I don't know. I just don't want to hear fucking fat lip and then Alicia Keys. That's not what's going to happen to me. Like, <laughs> That's you know, hilarious. Like, I don't I, notice these things. I'm too busy looking at cars Travis, on the freeway. <laughs> Travis, <laughs> I'm going squirrel. <laughs> Travis, Travis literally is like, Travis lives like how Facebook has the meta world now. Travis has been living in the metaverse for years. <laughs> <laughs> with That's that lit. being said, we did talk about, um, I had to get that little clip off. I guess I don't know what we're going to do with that. But um, with that being said, we did just in the last segment talking about the holidays and uh, our guest EP for the day uh, brought up this one. What are some of the best gifts that we've ever received as a child? And I, they don't have to just be Christmas. If you can remember, shout them out there. The greatest gift I ever received as a child was a Christmas gift. Hands down, the basketball hoop when I was a kid. Oak Springs Drive. Shot. That was a good hours, one. Hours. That was hours. a good one. That was my favorite. Like my favorite thing to do to this day is to shoot baskets. like therapeutic for me. As a kid, it was the best thing you could have copied. The first time Josh invited me over, he literally said, yeah, dude, uh, I got a cell phone and I got a hoop so we can like shoot hoops in my driveway. And I was like, oh, but like <laughs> he was huh. geeked. Like it was like he was so geeked. All. I literally remember that being like fifth grade. Josh that was like, a great, I got a hoop. Favorite. I'd say for me, one of the most memorable was the, I'd say the Xbox and PlayStation 2. Yeah. Being a gamer myself, it definitely set the tone for who I am. And I was like, yes. How old were you? I got the I got the very first Xbox first because I had to technically swindle my at the time uh, actually of course not at the time my little brother I had to swindle my dad to get him the PS2 for his birthday so I had to try to w wiggle my way in there for that but yeah so I think I was like I think I was like eleven or twelve I think I was eleven yeah I think hey, I was 11. hey you know what's funny though so we've all seen Travis like when he tries to like be sneaky or try to convince someone to do something without they knowing like, without them like realize be manipulative you know what I mean. Not one of Travis's strongest suits, you know, we could say confidently. Can we imagine like 11 year old Travis trying to convince his dad to be like, I just picture like in his head, he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna swindle my dad into getting Diego. And he's like, I picture Travis like, Hey, yo, pops, get Diego the PS2. Cause I'm gonna ask mom for the Xbox for Christmas. It was pretty, it was pretty much like that, but it was very easy because unfortunately, Diego used to always like, uh, you, uh, he was autistic and he really looked up to me and like we had a great relationship as young but I could not you know having him it, he taught me a lot and made me a lot of being patient yeah. this piece of shit just wanted to do every single thing that no, I, I respect <laughs> that bro hey, no, hey, we talk him. about everybody the same way fuck him we talk about everybody the same way <laughs> and he wanted to do and play every single thing that I wanted to play so if I was playing that's Halo, a sibling thing he wanted to play Halo <laughs> funny story about him though <laughs> I had to get Grant so Grand Theft Auto was a thing right in Grand Theft Auto 2 was like a legendary Grand Theft Auto it was like one of the first like whatever and I was like 8 years old 9 years old and we got Grand Theft Auto so maybe I did get the Xbox younger I don't know but we had Grand Theft Auto and we're playing give Diego the sticks this guy because you know how you have weapons and shit goes to a random lady on the streets and starts beating the shit out of her <laughs> 
<laughs> this episode is rated M for mature. <laughs> it's like beating the sh- okay. In that the was w- first move, <laughs> <laughs> right off the gate. First move. Hey, that tells you what he's been thinking about Travis. Because it's, <laughs> it's a default weapon that you can get. Pulls out a fucking bat and just starts beating the shit out of this lady. The worst part, Josh, is that she's he's beating the shit out of her for like seven minutes, like like a solid like the whole time. Like, what are you doing? I'm like Diego, go do something. Like, go do something different. Like, for <laughs> here. Exactly, like run a mission, do something, beat someone else. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, and my mom saw this and got thought it was an issue, which. Respect to mama You know Probably yeah. was a better That she didn't do that Got the Grand Theft Auto Return The next day Damn Never never got to play it again Really You know It was a damn shame It was a damn shame bro Oh my god I'm yeah. so glad we went Into that deep dive That might have been The greatest Travis clip Of all time That was up there With the win Dude <laughs> Oh my yeah, god it was sad I was like fuck man So that's why I never That's why I don't like Grand Theft Auto Until this day People love it. I don't find it amusing. Yeah, I mean, people with autism are interesting people, like, in general. My brother one time, <laughs> probably shouldn't say this, but my brother one time, uh, like, ran away from home, and he stayed with a friend, and his brother has autism. <laughs> and my brother said that the kid proceeded to jerk off, like, 12 times <laughs> in two days. That's really wild, though. What type <laughs> of shit is that? They have nothing to do with autism. They ain't got yeah, nothing to do with autism. That's just he, someone who's autistic doing something. They ain't got nothing to do with autism. Let's turn it, I'll turn it into a good shedder light back to the whole thing. No, it was good regardless. <laughs> Josh made it dark. Yeah, but, like, I'll, I'll like I used good. to fuck with them. Like, like, this guy used to, like, when I met him at a very young age, this guy loved two things. G.I. Joe's and G.I. SpongeBob. Joe. This Facts. man... His could G.I. recite no every fucking Spongebob episode to you. Like, he, it, it is beyond. It is beyond this nigga singing shit. Like, you know what he It just, was impressive to watch, though. It, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> and then the G.I. Joes. I'm talking, this man had thousands mm-hmm. of G.I. Joes. And at his old place when we first met my stepdad, who I consider my father, like, he had two rooms of G.I. Joes spread out everywhere. <laughs> I promise you, I take one fucking G.I. Joe. <laughs> the one with the fucking orange coat and the blonde hair. I take one G. Dude, I take one G.I. fucking Joe. This piece of shit would know that I had it. Crying. Is, is crying. he a piece of shit? Are you a piece of shit? Because you don't even shit. want the G.I. Joe. You just want to be an I'm asshole. A piece of shit. I'm you, just, you. You, you took the G.I. Joe that looks like Thor dressed like Nicki Minaj. Of course, he's going to find it. To <laughs> it did not matter. I come in, this motherfucker be crying to the, to, to the dad. Like, Travis. Travis took my G.I. Joe. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> fucking go into his room for 30 minutes later, toss that shit in there. Bitch. <laughs> fucking, I, used to be a, I used to be one of those little uh, older brothers who definitely used to definitely just do anything and everything to, to make you. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, it was a good time. Okay, let's, let's, let's reel it in. Reel it in. <laughs> um, what the fuck? Uh, Christmas presents, I think it's the topic. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna say on the basketball thing, my parents got me, you know, like um like how you have the game at the arcade? They got me one for my garage. But like oh, the, the one that's side hard. the little side net and yeah. like you know with the little like small shot? Yeah, bro. I got one for Christmas. That's pretty lit. That went crazy. Um I got the laser tag game one time where you like got to put the vest on. Oh, it's lit it's like the home set one. I got, I got DDR dancing or whatever that one was. That shit was hard. That for the PlayStation, that shit was sick. Sandstorm. My, oh. mom, my mom used to tell us Sandstorm and Groove tonight. She'd be like, hey, play, play Sandstorm. Play Sandstorm. <laughs> and then you seeing us? <laughs> <laughs> this is going crazy. That was lit. Nah, the great. Air hogs. God, the, the footballs and shit. Oh. So you're a big babe, uh, Blade Blade. I, would, I swear to God, that was the next time you're about to be. A, you're a big Blade Blade. Type of I guy. have. I used to go to the comments and stuff off Plaza Boulevard and do Yu Gi Oh tournaments and somewhere else for Beyblades. <laughs> and my mother will tell you, I have collect. I have gotten bread off these fucking Beyblade tournaments. Your you boy, retire, uh, bro. That I retired from because I made money. <laughs> you can retire from something you made money from. Those are the tech deck hall of fame, by the way. I am also in the tech deck. Oh, I was stupid. We used nasty. to piss you off see, middle school got teachers grades, all day. You, you bro, tests, you be I doing literally tech. like. I never passed math in middle school, and I think that's the only class I've ever gone to tech deck. Like, I'm, if I wasn't paying, if I couldn't pay attention, yeah, you do it all the time. Yeah, just I love the bird. Her. I love the bird ones, and then the skeleton. The skeleton brand was my favorite one. I don't know what brand that was, but I like those tech decks. They were lit. Uh, I think Zoe, you wanted to talk about uh, and it's freedom. Okay, so I, I, you know, let's make this open. I talk a lot on this, so I want to get you guys' ideas. So obviously, Enes Kanter changed his name. He is an American citizen now. 
You know what I mean? He is Ennis Cantor Freedom. That is his full name. Wow, and we man. know he's been through a lot. He's been arrested at airports. They have imprisoned his father at, in Turkey. He's been through a lot. You know, we make the joke that Jesus and Meryl made, like, don't fuck with a nigga on a no-fly list. Like, you know what I mean? And he I really, think we he did, really couldn't come back to his own country. Yeah, and I think we did talk about it when he pressed LeBron. I think yeah, we were here for that. I think so. Now, here's the question, though. Take away the pressing LeBron in New York thing. That's just, you know, he's on the Knicks. You got to do that raw, raw shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's the truth, though. You it know, it was I mean? a good press. I no, mean, it was, no, he was right. I understood it. You got to defend. Like, you got to defend your rookie. But I don't think any of that has anything to do with this. But I feel like people are making that like, oh, there's history. And I'm like, no. If I'm on one team and you push my rookie, I'm gonna try to make you. I'm gonna let him know that he's protected here. You know what I mean? But um, with that being said, do we feel like all of his jabs at LeBron while pushing his human rights message? Is it doing more or worse for him? It's like in the goal of it? I think it's doing worse completely. I mean, I think you could go about it a better way, like talking to LeBron in person. You know, like when they passed each other in the hall, they said, LeBron said he walked right by him. I put it on social media, like that's a good start, but like have a man conversation is what I think. I think so. I, I'm going to piggyback off of what you're saying. And I think to have adult and real conversations about real and hard topics, I think that that stuff isn't just a... Uh, like you shouldn't be th- trying to throw shots to fix it over social media or in the press. Because that like, topic's not a joke it, at all. It, exactly. So it's I think, about I, like think a man, I think you're right. Exactly. Come face to face if you're really about that action. So yeah, because yeah. the people suffering are like in China. That shit. Sucks. We're over here putting on social media. It looks kind of weak. But on yeah. my part, I have maybe. a question. The fact that him calling someone out who does have a history of saying some, depending on how you want to view it, some questionable things about China and the NBA, it making it worse doesn't that kind of prove his point? In a way, I, in a way to that, I, I agree. I, I, that way explain, it does. Explain. Like, the fact that he, like, let's be honest here. Ennis Cantor's fucking right. 100%. 100% like, he, he's right. Yeah. He's 100 right. And yes, you can be right and tell him go about it the wrong way. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. People do that all the time. But I think this is one of those, like, in the sake of getting someone's attention who is supposed to be a leader and things like that, obviously, when you call people out, they're allowed to respond however they want. Like, you know, I'm a big believer in that. But I feel like the fact that we're sitting here saying, oh, him making fun of LeBron is the wrong way to go about bringing a, like light to this topic. When truthfully, him just talking about it should just be enough. Like, you know what I mean? Like the idea, not like the idea like, oh, he's doing more. Like the LeBron thing should, in, in my personal opinion, it should, it should be effective because there's people who only care about this subject now. Because of LeBron, whereas other people are saying, oh, he shouldn't have come at LeBron like that. And I understand that completely. But in my head, it's like, well, if his goal was to get it out there, if Ennis Cantor's chirping, because we've been seeing him chirp, and it has had some effect, but he's never got the draw in like he did when he did the LeBron thing, doesn't that kind of prove his point? Like, y'all don't even give a fuck unless I personally attack someone that yeah. you love when I've been talking about this for years. I would agree with you 100% on that. He went after the right person, obviously. But is anything actually going to get done? That's the real question. I mean, but that wasn't the argument. The argument was, is he going about this? The answer the right to that way? is... But is he going to get what he wants? I think that's to be more, told. I think that's to be told. It's going to get more attention, but China like We're talking China. about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that is something... I mean, like, the U.S. government did a little boycott, how they're not sending any over... They're not, we're not sending any, like, representatives or anything, like, from the Biden administration because of what they're doing and stuff like that. So, I think it is going to get more attention, but, I mean, and maybe people don't want to hear this or, like, this is, like, off topic in a sense, but, like, China's China right now. Like, they're the powerhouse, like, if you haven't fucking noticed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, not so much they're untouchable, but, like... In a sense, they're, it's just like, like Nike is like, Nike runs off of fucking China production over there. Like, what the fuck are they really going to do? Like, it's so, it's so above that it's just like. That's what I think. I think the you know, topic's so above and is Kenner and LeBron. It, it's, it's, it, it's going to take a lot. But I like the fact that it is going to at least draw more light to this. Because at least, I mean, that's got to be good for something. Yeah, I just think you should talk to LeBron about it in person. I don't I, think LeBron I don't, have to make a statement. I don't think it was. I, I don't, because you know what it is. He has to talk with LeBron. In his defense, let's think about this. And his canter goes on the shop. That's never going to fucking happen because LeBron's not going to let him sit there and play. Awesome. No, but he's the thing. You have a life. You have a lifetime deal with Nike. You're going to let a guy who's called out your team come on the shop. And here's the thing. I don't even know if that's muddling voices, like you know, like not giving people platforms. Because one, it's my platform. I'm allowed to do with what I want with it. Yeah. And two, I am in this contract. You know what I mean? Like, here's the thing. This is what people don't realize is like this. LeBron does this. Some people can say, oh, this is a great move. He's being real. Like, you know, he's being like an actual philanthropist, blah, blah, blah. It's funny because people are like, LeBron's got enough money to blah, 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 do whatever. 
We don't know the legal implications that happen if LeBron lets Ennis Cantor's public dialogue go somewhere because we don't know what that Nike contract looks like. Like, if you're caught wearing Adidas, you lose money. If you're caught doing this, you lose money. If you're caught on your platform letting someone talk crazy about us, it's not like, oh, you lose money. No, that nigga's getting sued for big bucks. That's a, that's something something I didn't take into account there. Like, think could about it happen? Like, could happen? Yeah, like... Like, yeah, we're going to talk about this, but, like, LeBron's livelihood is also here because there's a lot of people being employed by him. Every dollar that he has is invested or put into somewhere else. Obviously, he, mm. I think overall human rights are, uh, human rights being violated is obviously bigger than two people. You what if, what like, saying? LeBron and other huge Nike athletes, like, collaborated and said, we want you to move your production to another country or Let something? Me, look, That'd look be me, wild. Look at, me, look at me clearly. Not a fucking thing will happen. That'd be wild. Well, I'm saying LeBron and a lot of big... big Not athletes. a fucking thing will Michael happen. Jordan. Not a fucking thing will happen. I think so. You know why? You, no, you no, have no, to no, have, no. You'd have to have. You'd have to have LeBron, Jordan, and Cristiano Ronaldo. You get those three to do it right there. Things could possibly happen. Those are the possibly. Three big no, because guess what they're gonna do? What? All, 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 all their yeah. budget. Yeah. The, like, yeah. the budget. The budget that they have, they will allocate to smaller athletes and here's the thing like this they'll make someone else the next popping guy they'll put someone else on a poster yeah. they'll get their next apartment because here's the thing you know why lebron ronaldo and michael jordan even have that much money yes people buy their shoes but you guess what it is the overhead on those shoes ain't more than 12 dollars. so guess what lebron gets a bigger cut so when they do that guess what nike's gonna remind them hey yeah you make money in the nba but we all know most of their money, their endorsement money is worth a lot more, you know, mm -hmm. for the most part. And guess why it's worth a lot more? Because of this. So you're going to tell us, oh, move what's been making you millions of dollars. And I'm not saying it's the right thing. But you're going to sit here and try to t tell me all of a sudden we give a fuck about them kids. Now, here's a question. If we move this, are you going to help employ these people that I went from paying 15 cents an hour to $15? Because you had no problem profiting off 15 cents, but you want to tell me to do with $15. And that's where the issue is. Like, you're going to tell me I need to restructure my whole corporation that you've been fucking eating off of for a yes. decade? Yes. And guess what? And I understand yes, yes, in a yes, perfect yes. world. That's, exact, that's exactly no, what no, I'm saying. I understand, yes. I understand in a perfect yes. world that makes sense. But look, we can bring this back to social things. I got a question. When, uh, when all that Black Rights Matter shit happened, we asked for record labels to donate a bunch of money. We've all seen that graph. We've seen two labels do it. We've seen a whole bunch of people put initiative on the black culture. And guess what? We ain't seen a dollar spent. Flint still got dirty water. Yeah. In a realistic world, yeah, that's nothing so fucking changes. It's hot. To, it's that's cool. Why we asked Unfortunately, it. you're yeah. right. Unfortunately, you're right. The thing is, I think certain people like LeBron James, Christian Ronaldo, Michael Jordan move the needle more than others, obviously. You're probably right. Nothing's going to happen. I would, just I would like, love for them to do I that. I would like for the them to take a step in the right direction and do something. But I'll let you close out the show, though. With that being said, you pumpkin spice hoes. Yes. Follow my DM at Dunn underscore Zo. That's me, Henny Hendrix, the Tennessee Titan himself, Joshua Henry Pelle. Shout out to our guest producer, Young Go Measy. Real sleazy. Has the packs looking, eat breezy. Mm. And, you know, with that being said, we out. We out. <laughs>